we're now going to cover some ARM processor generalities. Let me first start by describing a little bit more about what is the ARM business model. ARM, standing for Advanced Crisp Machine Limited, uh, was created in the 1990. And it is a company that focuses on reduced instruction set computers, specifically tailored and designed for energy efficient um, microprogram computing. The concept exploits a risk architecture, meaning that uh, we are using instructions with minimum semantic, such as move data, addition, subtraction, multiplication, no really fancy instruction like the CISC model. Um, back in the uh, end of the 80s, the ARM2 architecture uh, was probably the first and simplest 32-bit core ever with only 30,000 transistors with no cache. Nowadays, ARM evolved with many, many, many different uh, architecture variations suited to many range of uh, computing needs, starting from very low power processors, which are the Cortex-M architecture, going to very, very highly complex architecture like the A-series, uh, currently used in most of the smartphones. ARM is very peculiar from his business model that is um, one of the first um, fabless um, business models. So ARM designed computer cores and sell these IPs to other companies that will integrate that on silicon. Companies that could be either fabless once again and use uh, different foundry services or companies that have their own foundry. So do not expect to find any ARM processor cores branded on the ARM chip, but expect to find that in many different uh, processor um, available in the market. So as I just mentioned, ARM does provide many different families. Um, on this diagram, you can see a couple of uh, the ARM family, starting from the M processor family, the R family, and the A family. Uh, the M family is uh, really suited for microcontrollers and deeply embedded structures, um, having very low um, power budget and minimal energy requirements. Uh, in addition to that, ARM also provides the R family that is suited for real-time operations and they do provide some hardware mechanism to keep with real-time. At the top of the complexity and system capabilities and performance, you will find the A family standing for application processors, application processors supporting embedded Linux, other mobile operating system, uh, they do support uh, memory management units and so on and so forth. And this is what you find in most of your uh, smartphone nowadays. Um, really what is a good takeaway from this slide is that in the embedded systems world, you will have one processor, one microcontroller really tailored for your needs. Needs being a uh, number of peripherals, computing capabilities, all for a given power budget. And your job as a designer will be to pick the right microcontroller, the right uh, processor architecture, and the right microcontroller that will fit really your requirements. In addition to just simply mentioning that there is uh, these three big family differences, uh, within a given family, you will find also more and more uh, complex architecture. And the main differentiation as part of the core architecture is the instruction set. As you know from your processor class, the instruction set corresponds to the uh, semantics capability of your processor. How many different instructions your processor is able to uh, process. And the more instructions you have, the more complex is your processor, the more it requires computing, um, um, specialized computing blocks in order to implement these instructions, and of course the more costly it will be, yet capable. So uh, here's a, a quick overview of what's going on. So in the Cortex M0 and M1 family, you will find most of the general data processing as well as IO control tasks that are capable uh, to be executed thanks to the ISA. And as far as you're moving from um, this M0 and M1 to M3, M4 and M4 FPU, you will simply enrich your uh, instruction set architecture with advanced data processing DSP operation and floating point operations, and that will provide you additional performance and power on your system. Yet having, again, a more complex operation, more energy uh, consumption, and of course, a more costly uh, processor cores. 
Here's an overview of the ARM processor architecture. This is borrowed from the ARM7 architecture. Um, what you will see is that, as any processor, you will find a data pass organization of your processor going along with your uh, control operation, with your instruction decoder. Um, what we can see is that we are uh, dealing with a 32-bit RISC processor. 32-bit meaning this is the data and address bus width that we have, and you can see that most of your data and address bus, all of your data and address bus are actually on 32 bits. And that core can run at 48 uh, megahertz. So register and data pass at 32 bits, and it does include a three-stage pipeline. The three-stage pipeline of the ARM7 architecture consists of the fetch, decode, and execute uh, operations. I refer you to the previous video where we were talking about the traditional pipeline uh, in uh, most of microprocessors. The ARM7 architecture uses the SUMB instruction set. SUMB is one of the, I mean, is the, uh, has been created by ARM and corresponds to the way they encode the opcodes of your instruction and it is made to minimize the memory footprint. So, Despite the fact that the uh, architecture support 32-bit data words, uh, most of the instructions are encoded on 16 bits, which gives you a lot of code uh, compactness. So you can get a large code density, meaning on a single word, you can put two instructions instead of only one. Um, the ARM does have a very specific way of uh, dealing with memory and you have three possible data sizes uh, that you can get access from and to your memory. You can address words, so complete 32-bit words, or ALF words, or bytes directly. We'll discuss in a future lecture how this does have an influence on your um, memory access and how you can end up with uh, segmentation faults and critical errors on your microcontrollers if you do not respect the so-called uh, memory alignment of your data. By default, the organization is Little Indian, but we can also configure that as Big Indian. Uh, the organization as Little Indian means that the um, byte 0 is encoded as part of address 0, and you have 0, 1, 2, and 3. The Big Indian configuration will be the opposite. Most ARM processors implement two instruction sets. I did mention the compact instruction of ALF word, which is the 16-bit thumb instruction set, but they also have a way to encode instruction on 32 bits. This provides some advantages depending on the application and the complexity of your, uh, of your instructions. However, know that you cannot switch from an instruction uh, encoding to another one um, very easily. You'll need to set a flag, and that will take a little bit of time for your processor to switch from a mode to another. In addition to all the instructions I mentioned, um, you also do find some very well-known extensions of the ARM instruction sets uh, that will be made for very specific uh, applications. For example, uh, two well-knowns will be the JSL um, instruction set as well as the NEON one. The NEON is made for multimedia and signal processing, while JSL is made to support uh, Java byte codes uh, natively to implement um, uh, system that will natively uh, decrypt Java operation instead of having a compiled version. An ARM processor uh, does contain a user system register, and here is a typical uh, structure of, uh, of your registers. Um, we do traditionally have uh, 16 uh, 32 bit registers, um, as well as a couple of um, um, more like mechanics type of uh, registers, such as the program counter, the link register, the program counter um, indicating what will be the next instruction address, the link register being um, the return address of a subroutine. So when you go to a function, the return operation will end up going back to the address stored in this link register. You also have the stack pointer that uh, will be used to keep track of the position of the memory stack. All the other registers are general purpose registers, but be careful that we have low uh, address registers, R0 to R7, 
and I register R8 and more, and this will have different uh, effect when we look into interrupts. Um, in addition to that, we have the state register that will indicate the general behavior of your processor and will contain specific flags uh, such as the division by zero, the negative results, the overflow bits, and so on and so forth that are used essentially to control the operation of your processor. Um, if we look in more details at the combined program status register I just mentioned, um, you will see several flags that are important to understand what are the conditions of an instruction you just operated. So for instance, uh, those flag N, Z, C, and V will uh, be set to 1 under the following conditions. So if you have a negative result from your ALU, the N bit will um, go to 1, and same goes if you have a zero result for your ALU, and so on and so forth. Uh, those flags are typically used to create conditional instructions, so you can decide if my previous result was equal to zero, then I can do that, otherwise I don't. Um, you also find in this uh, program status registers a t-bit that does contain in which state you stand, if you are dealing with an ARM instruction set or a thumb instruction set. And you will also um, contain the ISR number, ISR standing for Interrupt Service Routine, and this ISR number uh, depends on which interrupt flag was triggered. We'll discuss that amply in the interrupt uh, class. So, in this class, we are using the STM32F0 family microcontrollers. So, the real question is, are things as simple as the basic ARM core I just mentioned? Which, somehow, some can argue that it's already a pretty complex architecture. Um, my question is, what about peripherals? So far, I just mentioned the core architecture. But if you remember correctly, I told you that a microcontroller does contain the core, the memory subsystem, and the peripheral. So what about those peripherals? Do they have any big impact or not? Well, it turns out that they really lead the game in the embedded systems world. And I would like to uh, simply show you a representation of um, the architecture of the microcontroller we're using in this class. You can see that the Cortex M0 CPU is just that part here. All the rest is occupied by the peripherals. You will find your memory subsystem right there, your flash memory, your SRAM controller, and so on and so forth. The rest is only dedicated on peripherals. Timers, GPIOs, communication interface, and so on and so forth. So in order to master a microcontroller, we do not only need to understand what's going on with the core, but we need to understand how to make a good use of all those peripherals and how to make things work smoothly. So I just said that, oh, well, you know, uh, we have different variations of peripheral. Peripherals do lead the game. So uh, wh why would things be different? As I said, the ARM business model is just to sell the processor cores as well as to sell techniques in order to connect peripherals to the processor core. And there are many manufacturers that do include those processor cores. Um, the traditional uh, microcontroller people, ST, NXP, TI, Atmel, but as well as the FPGA people, Xilinx, MicroSemi, and so on and so forth. Uh, so how do they differentiate their product? Uh, they differentiate the products by the peripherals. Uh, you can get an FPGA connected to your processor, you can get sensors, you can get memory, you can get uh, sensors as well in the package, and so on and so forth. So the bottom line, when you will select an MCU for your own application, you must consider, you must think twice about the MCU because this will be the most critical phase in the design of your embedded system. So you'll have to pick the microcontroller that you're comfortable with considering the set of peripherals that you will find inside. During the first part of this class, we're going to use the uh, STM32F0, which is an ARM Cortex M0 processor uh, microcontroller uh, built from ST Microelectronics. Uh, that being said, in your project, you might pick uh, another microcontroller of your choice.